A reading from Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called, the Lord our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when they shall no longer say, as the Lord lives, who brought up the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but as the Lord lives, who brought up and led the offspring of the house of Israel out of the north country and out of all the countries where he had driven them. Then they shall dwell in their own land. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord. Advent places us in the shoes of the Old Testament church. We're awaiting the coming Messiah. But of course, he's already come. We're not awaiting the coming days when the Lord will bring ethnic Jews out of the scattered territories of Assyria and Babylon and into Palestine. Note then that our aim in this new year is not to recapture the past through our memories. The church year certainly is a reliving of sorts through the life of Christ, but it is not our reliving of the history that gives us fellowship with him. This is plain in the Lord's Supper, is it not? How is it that we do this in remembrance of him? Well, we remember him as God with us right now, at work in these gifts and speaking to us with his own words. The strength of our church here then is the strength of the Holy Scriptures themselves. We Christians hear the voice of the Good Shepherd. So behold, the days are coming. They've long since come. And thus the song needed to change. Once the Lord brought his people out of Egypt, this was the centerpiece of his praise. But soon, says Jeremiah, they would no longer be singing this. They would praise the Lord who brought up and led them out of the north country and all the countries where he had driven them. Soon there would be a song of the return from exile. Judah and Israel, all of God's people dwelling securely together in the promised land inhabited again. You can read about this in Ezra and in Nehemiah. But you can also keep reading. You can read on to Haggai and to Malachi. You could even read the Maccabees and Josephus, and then you would see that there is more to this prophecy than just the exile. This is not a permanent change in the Song of Israel, to leave behind the exodus from slavery and now to take up forever the return from captivity as their defining theme. It just can't be. Look around. Where is the king of the Jews? Where is the justice in the land west of the Jordan? Indeed. And where, for that matter, is justice in our land? Well, first of all, the song will always have to change if it's a song that's mostly about ourselves, about our kings or our lands. There will always be need then of continuous small rescues, whether that's through blundering judges like Samson or wise but short-lived Solomons or even a pagan Cyrus from time to time. But when, when has the anger of man ever produced the righteousness of God? Our songs do have some continuity in their constant need for revision. They're like country songs. They all have a similar subject matter with a slightly different twang, but they're never songs about righteousness. They're not songs about living. They're always songs of memory. The songs of the church, however, are different. They changed in many and various ways for a time. Now in these last days, they are always 
eternally new. They have continuity over the ages, like Isaiah's own mention of the shoot. There's always a Moses, a Jonah, a David, an Israel in these songs. But the root of Jesse and the newly rising branch are not bound to the deadness of mankind's rotten wood anymore. Our songs are about the Lord who lives. And notice that that Lord who lives does not change between Jeremiah's two songs. Now the days have come, declares the Lord, when my son is raised up. Now the Lord lives and lives among us in the flesh. Now his name is known, the Lord, our righteousness. This is the topic of Christian songs. In fact, in Christ, we still can sing all of the old ones aright too. Jeremiah's partially pro fulfilled pro prophecy, at best partially fulfilled, is only known in Christ, the branch and the Son who is the Lord. This living Lord and King lived among us, and we saw his glory when he was crowned with thorns. This is our hope. This is not our own righteousness, but the righteousness of Christ that works our salvation. The righteous one who, fulfilling that other old song that we sang today, with clean hands and with a pure heart, fulfilled the law in every detail for us, and then, in our place, despite his innocent hands, ascended the holy hill to suffer unjustly the justice and the execution that our sins had deserved. And behold, the Lord lives. Christ Jesus, the Lord, our righteousness. And you are grafted into this righteous branch so that you may be his own and so that you may live under him in his kingdom. And thus, dear Christians, the day has come when we will no longer say, as the Lord lives who brought Israel out of Egypt, or who led them out of the countries where he had driven them, but we will say, as the Lord lives, who brings his saints of all times and places into his righteousness, his name and his kingdom. This is our new song that will not need to change, the song that is about Jesus Christ. The song, of course, about what the living Lord has done for us fully in his advent, but not sung as a powerless memory, but rather as a certain and living and active promise for us that declares us righteous and that makes all the difference in our lives now too. As the Lord lives, who was crucified and who gave himself up for me, so I too shall live. And this is the name by which your Lord is called, the Lord our righteousness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for joining us for Chapel. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.